Today we are looking at another religion in fiction, that of the Felis Sapiens. But to explain who these people are, I have to discuss how they came to be. And well, you heard my spoiler warning, so let's get into it. In the opening episode of Red Dwarf, we are introduced to Dave Lister, a slob who works as third technician on the mining ship of the same name. It is clear that Dave is not really that bothered by his job, and thinks that rules are, well, more like guidelines really. Unlike his bunkmate, Arnold J. Rimmer, who wants to do everything by the book. Now, the greatest example of this laissez-faire attitude is that Dave has a secret aboard this city-sized mining vessel that's hidden even from the man who lives in the same cabinet he does. It's a black cat he picked up on shore leave that he named Frankenstein. However, brains are not exactly Dave's department, and he gets caught having smuggled a cat on board after he sends selfies of himself and Frankenstein to the ship's photo lab, who reports him to the captain. Dave is then given an ultimatum. Either he surrender the cat for vivisection, or he gets put into stasis for six months. Not wanting his new pet cat to die, Dave refuses to hand over Frankenstein and gets put into stasis, where he would be frozen in time and space for the rest of the ship's journey. What happened next is something nobody could have seen coming. The entire crew of the ship were completely disintegrated by a Cadmium-2 explosion, which was caused by Dave's bunkmate, Rimmer, who had fixed the drive plate incorrectly. But Frankenstein survived, having escaped into the ship's hold during Dave's trial. Here's the thing though, Frankenstein was a female cat, and not only that, when Dave had smuggled her aboard, she was pregnant. Over the next three million years, these cats would breed, evolve, and eventually start to resemble the human who had brought their ancestor aboard Red Dwarf, turning from what we know as the simple house cat into the Felis Sapiens, the subject of today's video. But it would seem that Frankenstein was also rather enamoured with her rescuer, and she would listen to his grand ideas about where he was going to go, and where he was going to take her, and his plans for when they got there. Dave would often regale her with tales of what was to come when they returned to Earth. Dave was going to buy a plot of land in Fiji, and he was going to open a fast food stand, and he was going to own a farm. All grand dreams for a man who, when pressed, would list his occupation as... Occupation? <laughs> uh, boom. <laughs> but it seems that Dave's cat was inspired by what he had to offer, and retained it in her memory. And these memories she passed on to her kittens, who passed it on to their kittens, and on to their kittens, and so on, and so on, and so on, until eventually... Three million years passed, with generations of cats living and evolving in the safety of the ship's hold, eventually forming an entire civilization with its own culture, its own traditions, and of course its own religion, all inspired by what Dave would tell Frankenstein in his bunk on his off hours. Once the radiation had subsided in the upper decks, the ship's computer decided that it was now safe to relieve Dave from stasis, where he discovers that he's probably the last human alive. He's dead, Dave. Everybody is dead. Everybody is dead, Dave. <laughs> Wait. Are you trying to tell me everybody's dead? <laughs> but he was also not alone on the ship, discovering a humanoid being that Holly informs him is a descendant of that cat that he'd smuggled aboard so many years ago. Dave is mesmerised by the fact that his pet cat had created an entire race of people and often asks this being, who becomes simply known as Cat, about everything to do with his people and their culture. Cat dutifully obliges by giving Dave information, in exchange for the odd bowl of Rice Krispies and the knowledge of how to gain fish from the vending machines around the ship. Part of this information was of course all about Cat religion, which Dave soon realises he was a direct inspiration for. Well, this is what we are here for, so Grab yourself some Wicked Strength JMC Leopard Lager, a nice curry, use your 14B to fix the like and subscribe buttons, and let's dive in.
Cat gives Dave a book, which is later revealed to be the Book of Smeg. This book, much like the Bible, is part history, part mythology, part law documentation, and of course, part prophecy. And the lines between them, after three million years or so, have been somewhat blurred. After some translation issues, because cats write with smells, not words, Holly, the ship's computer, manages to relay the information to Dave, including their history and their beliefs. As the cats changed and became sentient, in part thanks to the background radiation on the ship, they never forgot the tales passed down by their ancestors. They were told of Cloister, who was frozen in time to save the chosen Holy Mother, who was of course Frankenstein. The cat people believed that they were destined to join Cloister in the land of Fushal, a promised land of donut stands, hot dogs and paradise. And they began to view Cloister's ways as the holy ways, which very interestingly were very different to cat ways. This of course led to their own version of the Ten Commandments, which you can see on screen now. And as you probably noticed, these laws impact the very core of what it means to be a cat. This religion and these laws would begin to shape cat society, with the cats inspired by the tales of Cloister. Priests and clerics would wear clothes to imitate him, complete with clothes that were splashed with custard stains and gravy marks, and cigarettes hanging out from their ears, just like Cloister used to. Priests would often sport a paper hat, described by Cloister to Frankenstein. But this little fact would lead to some later problems. You see, a theological dispute would arise in cat culture over what colour hats people would be wearing in the Promised Land as they sold all the holy hot dogs and all the donuts in Fushal. Would they be red? Or would they be blue? Well, it turns out they were both wrong. It's Dolph, really, isn't it? You're not kidding. They were supposed to be green. <laughs> However, this did lead to a holy war, a war so vast that it nearly wiped out the entire cat race. But eventually, a truce was called after a few thousand years, after some sacred directions to Fushal were found. Both parties decided to call it quits, and set off to be the first to get to this promised land. And they focused on creating a flotilla of vessels, and eventually left Red Dwarf and set off into the stars. However, the instructions were not overly clear, because, well, this sacred document was no more than Dave's laundry list. One of the flotillas crashed into an asteroid, and the other sailed off into the stars to find that promised land once and for all. But by the time Lister had been released from stasis, there were only two cats left on board Red Dwarf. One was one of the old cat priests, and one who was pretty much an unbeliever in cat religion. It would be many, many years before Dave and the crew of the Red Dwarf would meet the descendants of Frankenstein again. But when they did, they realised that cat society had changed somewhat. Many years of scouring the stars for the promised land had taken their toll on their society, and they'd become barbaric and feral, rejecting the ways of cloister, and in essence, they'd kind of become atheists. Well, I say that, but that's not quite true. They had replaced their old god with a new one. Taking after previous human societies, they declared their leader, Rodan, as a living god, much like the pharaohs or the Roman emperors. They'd stopped following the rules of Cloister and rather had given in to the baser of cat instincts and had become more feral, creating more of an authoritarian, militaristic society. Those who still followed the Holy Poppadom were persecuted. They were hunted down and executed because of their beliefs. Evidently, many years in deep space had altered the cat mindset, changing them back to the hunters that they once were. Having wandered for so long and not even finding a hint of the paradise that Cloister had told them about, had led them to believe that this place just did not exist. But having spent time with their creator and his friends, one of whom was a fellow cat, the Felis Sapiens experienced a renaissance in the Cloister religion once the dictator, Rodon, had been defeated, proving that he was not, in fact, a god at all. They began to see that Fushal was not a physical place, but a state of mind. Much like with, say, Protestantism and Christianity in the 1500s, the religion had taken on a new spin, experiencing somewhat of a rebirth. So the cats set off into the stars once more, and who knows where they're going to end up, both physically and spiritually. 
And that, in brief, is the theology of the Felis Sapiens, life forms who evolved from a smuggled cat. This video was inspired by the fact that I was on a Red Dwarf podcast called Everybody's Dead Dave, which features both Adam Martin and Philip Hawkins. I have left a link to both the episode that I'm in and their channels in the description. Please do go check them out. They've got some fantastic pop culture content and it's well worth a look. If you'd like to check out some other fictional theologies, I'll leave a playlist on screen for you to click on. But until next time, grab a mango juice, stay shipwrecked and comatose, have fun, fun, fun in the sun, 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 and I will see you next time.